first. But, but the assumption is to be the second uh, appreciation. Um, I would like to say that the industry has been established in the state for the conditions of the industry at any point when you go from the area of support. You are all aware. Apart from the training that is still in the orientation camp, because of the security challenges in Syria, the security agencies have always been at a lot when they receive the distress call from our board members. They believe that, and that has been given confidence for board members to serve in any part of the country in their business state. This is the security challenges and services. We have to say um, the military for also giving us a consistent leadership at all time. The Red Cross, they will be by our side in Khan and Asai Khan, training our core members to render the federal services both home and abroad. We have to do this partners, our employers. If you are a new player, if the problem of this will come, they will have nowhere to go. But because you are there for something, we can post and even request for more and more because we know no matter the number we have in the state, you will always have problem and even look for more. We appreciate all that.
all particles did they observe? The NY is the director of the state, our distinguished guests. I want to acknowledge everybody, but especially again, acknowledge my lecturer. Um, I was really excited when I saw him walking. I, as you heard, I'm a veterinary doctor and one of the persons that shifted my journey early on when I started, that made it really easy. Because if you asked, uh, which one is the most difficult course to study on net? They will tell you veterinary medicine and then they will start listing others. Because you're going to have to look at all the animals alive, all the animals dead, and start comparing even humans too. So I tell you for a fact that Professor Adamu, who is seated here, was one of the persons that made it really easy to settle in because coming in fresh, you know, you get to be bombarded with a lot of things, but he made the journey easy. So, so thank you so much, and I'm delighted to see you. Um, let me begin by saying, I, I feel restrained a bit, but I'll try to stay. They, they want the photo up, so I will just have to, it's their event, and I will try not to move a lot. Um, but I want to open by saying that even though I was born about 30 plus years ago, um, I would say that with the knowledge of history and going back to look at Nigeria from 1960 up until now, the NYC, above all programs that this country has ever thought of, stands tall as the most successful one in this country. Try to look at history from the military era even our democracy was truncated three times. All right, so if you start counting from 1999 up until where we are now, we are talking about 23, 24 years. And the NYSC probably is sitting at 50. And that is a big deal. So I want you all to be proud of yourselves, but more importantly, the stakeholders, the staff, and everyone who has made this a reality. Let's put our hands together for ourselves. So 50 years ago, on 2nd May 1973, there was decree number 24. And as you would know, that vetted the NYSE. It was this singular decree, and that is why we say words are powerful. It was this singular decree that now turned into a policy that has made it possible for a lot of you whom, if I'm going to ask now, if you have been to Benue State before, pray out your NYC experience, I'm likely going to get 70% of you telling me that the first time you came to Benue State, or the first time you probably even left your state, is because you got called up for the NYC. So it's already in itself a solid validation. So this bettered the NYC. To do this core objective, inculcating Nigerian youths, the spirit of selfless service to the community. Selfless service to the community and emphasize the spirit of oneness and brotherhood of all Nigerians, irrespective of our cultural and social background. Like the director said rightly, this was one of the approaches that the then um, leader of our country, General Yakubu Gawon, thought of in terms of bringing Nigeria together in our uh, reconciliation efforts. Until today, we can say that this has been a huge success. Now, I'll tell you a story. How many of you have been to Tito? OK, how many of you have passed through Tito Gate? How many of you have had Tito Yogurt? Tito Yogurt, how many of you? No, you can't say nobody. Some of you, the minute you left the one in the camp, the first place you went with your remaining money that they gave you in camp was Tito. All right? And it's, and it's, but you've you seen Tito, you've been there, you've passed through that road one way or the other. It started in 1988. Because as at then, a young man who had been posted to Kano was redeployed, I would say redeployed, but channeled in, in terms of workstation to come and work in Benue, and he saw an opportunity, which today 
we have almost everywhere across Nigeria. But the platform that gave him the insights to start this, amongst other things, was the platform of the NYSC. I'll tell you another story. But this one, I'm going to call him John Doe. So John Doe served sometime in 2017. And during his service year, he had a lot of exposure and experiences, which provided him ample platforms to begin engaging with people who ordinarily he wouldn't have been able to have access to. And I'm talking international leaders. I'm talking countries which he had to be able to sit on the same table with them simply because through his service, he had found opportunities to give back to society. He had found opportunities to express his talent. So he kept on building that capacity and it opened him up to the world stage. This John Doe went on to develop very critical um, resource materials to even policy documents around the sustainable development goals during his service year. One of them was about the first that was done not just in Nigeria, but across Africa and was acknowledged by the UN itself. In fact, if you go on the UN website, you'll find that document that this John Doe created. Now, I will fast forward to this year. This John Doe, because of the exposure he had had during his service year in 2017, is going to be one of 57 Nigerians who is going to be in the United States for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. All of that is still traced back to his experience which started during his service year. And don't worry, we'll get to know who that John Doe is. Now, how, let's, let's test this theory. When you say we are fostering national unity and development, which according to the NYSC has happened for 50 years, does this truly pass the test for it? But let's come back to the objective. Because if you fail to understand the core objective upon which the NYS was set up, you will also miss the, the, the um, I would say, the assertion that says that NYSC has stayed for 50 years, and in this 50 years, I mean, in this 50 years, it has, consist it, it has consistently fostered national unity and development. So first and foremost, selfless service. So I get to meet um, core members who are worried about where they post them. And when you interrogate a bit of that theory, you realize that it's flawed because they fail to understand the basis upon which the NYC was set up in the first place. So if you left your, your state, or some people for their local government, leaving their local government for the first time because of service, you already begin to validate this. The NYC was meant, just like John F. Kennedy said in the US, to give you an opportunity to give back to your country and not necessarily what your country is going to give back to you. So you need to be able to have to understand that basis in the first place. And when you understand that emphasis, we cannot be able to move forward to talk about the Kaki advantage. Who has heard of that word before? Kaki advantage, show yourself. I don't have that advantage. Yeah, I, I lost it some years ago. Do you agree that it's an advantage? Yes, sir. All right. First and foremost, let's talk about platforms. I started by alluding to say that the NYSC is the most successful program that has been instituted by the Nigerian government from our independence till date. And that makes it a platform in its own right. So what are platforms? I cannot bear your surname because I do not come from a family. If they were going to share money today in your family by surname, I cannot, be a, I cannot benefit from that money simply because I do not come from your family. If all of you in this hall are going to be giving money on the basis of the fact that you're wearing your khaki, Shedra cannot be given because he's not. And even if I want to claim, they will ask me to bring my ID card and I will not have it. That is the power of platforms. They administer a level of advantage and privilege to anybody that has access to it and understands the power that comes with it. So if for my family, I am Some of you are bonded here already and you're going to bond for life. While I was in camp, Yobi State, 2017, I think that was the first that was opened after the insurgency. Wonderful experience. I enjoyed the Kunaya. Beautiful place. Watermelon all over the place. You would love it. I met someone from Imo State. And then I met someone from Meduguri. So while we were having an evening chat, the guy from Midugri was just talking about how he spent 
about, at the time, 150,000 in total from his 100 level up to when he graduated after four years. The guy from Imo State shouted in surprise. He said, ah, that's the money I would spend just in one semester in Imo State University. He didn't believe that it was that cheap to study in some part of the country, especially in northern Nigeria. When he now went to eat food and food was served, full plate and the amount was mentioned, he couldn't believe it because all his life, the amount of money he spent per plate, it didn't make sense to spend so much and have that quality of food. That was another angle. Now, we went on and on and he even talked about the fact that when he was coming, he thought that every part of northern Nigeria were all living in huts. So you started seeing all of the beautiful roads and the beautiful houses. That was already social orientation. NYSE is the only reason that will help you tell a better story for Benue. Because for some of you, before you came here, um, headsmen, bandits are taking over Benue State. Because that is what some media channels will tell you. But I will tell you that as you have been here, you will agree that you never had any incidents to make you worry while you are in camp. You are being in the state, you are having challenges. I'm not saying that there's no place that won't have its challenges, but relatively speaking, you will see Pino is safe. That is because you have had this first-hand first experience cut to NYC. How about the respect that my friend was able to have for, for people of northern Nigeria because his mindset was able to change? In terms of job opportunities, I remember when I was seven, I was one of 1,000 core members that were selected then for the DOI funding. It is an opportunity that is not open to any other person. I think the opportunity is still available now. I know platforms like Access Bank, year in year out, they provide funding opportunities for you. And several others. You cannot have access to it if you're not a serving core member. Then we'll talk about awards, recognitions. It was mentioned about core members from Bayway State who are going to be, who have gotten national recognition. How many Nigerians? On face value, do you find the president or the commander in chief acknowledging for their service to Nigeria? NYS provides that unique portal for you to be able to achieve it. Do you agree that, in all sincerity, the NYSC and in, in itself, this khaki you wear confers an undue advantage compared to any other young person around? Are we together? Hello? I wanted an answer, so I'll, I'll ask again. Based on this, Convincing argument. Do you agree that this khaki you're wearing confers on you a unique advantage you can be able to tap into? Yes, sir. Can I can I get the response? Yes, sir. Right. So how do you now make the most of your service here? Like it said, if you fail to plan, you're already planning to fail. Yes. It's same here too. You need to be clear on what you want to do. When you pass out from service, some of you are going to get jobs. Some of you are going to start up businesses. Some of you are going to want to further your studies. You must have that plan clearly defined for you before you step out of your home to go for camp. And in this case, one in a camp. You need to be clear on what you want to be able to do. When I was serving, and don't take my word for it, but this is the truth. Yes, as, as a vet, I had the privilege of being paid a core duty allowance during my service year. But I didn't receive that money up until when I, I was done with service. So that left me with 98. That was the money I was collecting all through my service year. And guess what? Out of my 98, I was able to save out 10,000 Naira every month. I'll tell you how. My, the duration or the proximity to the service. Hello? Listen so that you learn. My proximity to my clinic was very, very close. So I didn't have to spend anything on transport. So my night eight was, and food was really cheap. So I would just take that money, go to the market, after I receive it, buy stuff, come and keep in the house, and don't have to do any other thing. I mean, I, I was pretty much busy with the, with the work it was giving me, so I didn't have to think too much about stuff. So at the end of the service year, I had 10,000 Naira times 12. And then to ice it up, as I was done, um, the state government paid me my, my quality allowance. Of course, it was more than what I, I saved, but the point is I was able to save something. I know that now you have 33,000, inflation has done its thing, but I think you can still be able to cut out the piece. If you can do much with little, I assure you, you can be able to do more with more when it comes. But if you cannot save now with your 33,000 and you're telling yourself it's because you don't have enough, I think you need to look up your own spending discipline, all right? 
So again, you need to embrace every opportunity to serve. Some of you are averse to volunteering. They will tell you to come and support, and you say, how much are they paying me? If you don't learn how to volunteer in this time of your life, you're going to have problems because people are weary of, of young people who are only transactional. If the only thing you know is how much will you pay me, people will avoid you. So you must always think, what value can I bring to the table? I give my time freely because first and foremost, I am proud of what I bring to the table anytime I'm asked to sit on it. So because of that, I've also earned a space on it. But it's not because I kept asking for rewards. It's because I was happy to offer services and go home. I did a training a while ago on book publishing on Amazon. And afterwards, a director with um, um, Radio Benway reached out to me and said, she had paid someone 70000 for this same thing. And the person didn't even, even as much as deliver the sign-up login details. And I laughed at it. We talked and it passed like it was nothing. Because she was wondering why I had to go to that session free of charge. So you must first and foremost understand the value of giving yourself out to serve before value will come back to you. Then you must learn a skill. You have to ask yourself, as a graduate, if you are going to be retrieved, if that certificate you have was going to be collected, what else are you left with? They introduced me here and they said I'm a veterinary doctor, but they called other things too. So that means that if I woke up today and I said I'm not interested in practicing again, I have a pool of other things I'm going to draw from and survive and be fine. In fact, if they didn't even tell you that I was a vet, you probably wouldn't even know that. So you must be willing to build your capacity to reinvent yourself. Some of you, the year I started, you have not opened the book. Some of you have never ever read a book in your life. In today's world, it's a misnomer, and you want to be able to correct that. You need to have the right attitude, and then finally, you need to be able to take social branding seriously. Social media is a powerful tool. Hilda recently just broke a Guinness World Record. But I hope you know that she's not the only person that has done that. Right? There's this young man from um, Abia State. He has broken like five of them. Five. But no one knows about him. But they know about Hilda. Branding. You want people to know about you, put your message out there. Communicate that value you want people to know you for. That is how it's going to come back to you. And there are several other things to look out for. But you should tailor this message to fit your needs. Some of you will be passing out in a couple of days or weeks. How has it been for you? Are you really proud that you truly, truly added value and value came back to you? I was proud when I was giving service because I knew exactly the kind of future I was going to be walking into. And five, six years down the line, I'm proud of that. So, I know I've been facing NYSE and coppers. 50 years down the line, are they challenges? Yes, they are. Money. You know, for, if we ask, should we increase NYSE, allow everybody's hand to go? I know, I know. So, my first message to our partners here would be that because reality is setting in, it's something I want to be an Oliver Tweet on behalf of the core members. I got 98, they are getting 33,000. But I'm sure they'll be happy to also say that others are getting higher than they got because of the realities today. So I believe it's something, and I know that it's something that the system is actively looking into. Then accommodations. Because I engage very actively with core members, one of the biggest challenges they contend with is the challenge of accommodation. And I want to call on the state government too. That in this case, one of the ways to be able to make, because young people want to be able to give their energy in the right way that adds value, optimally. Accommodation where they get to lay their head, if they have this thing sorted out, is going to help drive their productivity. They're posting. This is another bottleneck. They will tell you that, oh, they sent me to a place where it's not relevant to my skill set. I know the system has what is playing, but I believe that as times change, we can be able to evolve too. In terms of ensuring that we match young people to places where they are most productive, that way we draw more value from them. <laughs> and finally, insecurity. I've already hit on this, but if we are going to be fair to be with, so much is being done already to address it across several country, uh, parts of the country. But just to amplify this, you must first be responsible for your own self. You ensure you don't go to places, that's why we talk about uh, security advice, you are giving that in camp. 
Don't go to places that put you at risk while the system in itself does its best to ensure that you're secure. So beyond NYSC, I will tell you this, your adds up. Every single thing you do adds up eventually. I got a call from um, where I served. This was last month. And they needed me to send a welfare message for the young people. So when I served, I was the CDS president for SDGs in the state I served. So they needed me to send a good new message. And as I was speaking and sharing, I, I was also reminiscing how far I've come from the young man who was there, you know, engaging with people, adding value in the way I could, interacting, building connections. Now I'm looking back and realizing that it's easier as we advance because of all of the seeds that we planted. So young people today, ladies and gentlemen, you need to ask yourself, how much have you planted in the course of your service here? I told you that this John Doe has a name. That person is me. All right? And it will be unfair. Thank you. It would be unfair if I came and stood on this stage and I couldn't tell you that I'm proud to have served as a core member. It would be unfair if I was going to just keep looking for other stories to come and tell you when I myself also went through service. So I want you to see myself as a represent representation of what's possible. As a young person, you have this pedestal to be able to maximize every opportunity that the NYC affords you. I see a lot of exciting innovations that are coming on now. I see that the NYC is even building, building a database of job seekers. We didn't have that during our time. I see all of the training that are put in in helping you people build skills. Yes, people like us also benefited from that. How much are you leveraging that while you are serving? Because by the time you go behind and the door closes against you, it cannot open. No one serves twice. You cannot serve more than once. So like Nelson Mandela said, sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. You can be that generation. We can be that generation. But it comes first and foremost from a place of responsibility. And that is why you must always look at life from the perspective of opportunities and not problems. Your sandbox is counting. The sand is going through. Some of you have few days. Some of you have few weeks. Some of you have few months. But eventually, the sand is going to go through. And like, how many of you know, know, know this guy on, on, on my slide? Who has seen him online? You know, they tried to throw him one time on, on, on Twitter. And they said, with all this shout, what is happening? And the guy came out and he's living well. So do not think that you don't want to show yourself because, I mean, you, you are a coordinated guy now. No, this is your stage. And if you don't blow your trumpet, someone who is probably not as good as you will blow the trumpet and will sit in the seat that you should have been sitting in and will be the one to determine your destiny, whether you like it or not. So that is why you want to maximize this opportunity. Because the NYC is here to stay. If God keeps us alive, 50 more years will come back in a bigger way to come and sit and still celebrate 100 years of NYC. To see what it's doing in terms of, at that time people will be saying um, 100 years of transformation. It might not be growth again or it might, it might be a different topic. But understand that you must leverage two things, time and chance. Do you know why some people will go back to court to go and be falsifying their age because they want to serve? They understand, and I'm not telling any of you to do that. So, a, a protege of mine reached out to me that he, he was past 30. So he was really, really at the telling man. He was telling me, okay, he wants to serve. And I said, no. The criteria says 30 years below. And for me, the biggest lie on it is the one that you go to court and you say that this age is not my own. Give me another one. It's the biggest lie on it. So, but I will tell you how to be able to also maximize your time so that when your colleagues that are already serving also come out, you would be same shoulder level with them. Because if you think that, because most people want to do that and they think is that 33,000 is the, is the alpha and omega. It's more. 
Let it just be an added advantage for you, for those of you that are going to serve. So understand the value of time and chance and utilize it very efficiently. These are my closing thoughts with you. Your first answer of the NYSC says that youths obey the Florian call. All right? Now we'll take the, the next line. Go on, go on. Under the what? What does that tell you? The situation will not be convenient. You wake up 5.30 or 5 o'clock while you are in, 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 in camp. Or 3 o'clock, right? It means it will not be convenient. But fast forward to here, with dedication and selflessness, Nigeria is ours. Nigeria, we serve. If you do not understand the basis upon what this foundation is built, you will miss it. You will say that NYC was a waste of time. You will be among the young people saying they should scrap it. And, and, and don't quote me. But I feel like um, if we want even the census that is going to happen to happen properly, we must integrate the NYC in its entirety. I mean, if you pull out core members from schools in Penway State today, most schools will collapse. If you pull out NYC from the elections, we will not be able to conduct it. So if we're going to be able to find an NYC core member anywhere across Nigeria, it only makes sense that they be part of the system in doing the census and doing it right. Because they have earned the right to do that. And that gives you the power to be able to compromise. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Understand this and understand it very clearly. You have your destiny in your hands. More than anything you think the NYC owes you, you owe the NYC and in Nigeria even more. So think how you're going to be able to maximize this 50th year of this solid institution that has given so much to people like me and several other Nigerians like Tito and other people who have created impact in Nigeria today because they had an opportunity to serve in Benue State, in Bayosa State, in Lagos State, in Kogi State, and any other state for that matter. Because every seed you plant here is going to amplify your life for the rest to the day that you drop it. I told you that I'm going to be in the U.S. next month. I am one of 57 Nigerians. And my story started when I was seven. 10,200 young people applied for this role that I was, I've been selected for. If I didn't have value, if they didn't see anything in me, I would not be the person selected out of the other 70, 57 that will be going to the U.S. together, fully sponsored by the U.S. Department of State. So young people, maximize, maximize this opportunity. Build these networks. Take them seriously. Because the moment you take off this khaki, you're going to pass in the mantle to an entire new generation of young people who will maximize anything you fail to maximize. And you will sit back and realize that when you are complaining, they took advantage of an opportunity. Thank you very much. You can take your seat. Thank you very much, Dr. Shedra. Please, let's appreciate it. You know, Dr. Shedra is one of our proud representative of the scheme within the global community. He's representing NYC very well. It's part of the success story of the NYC achievement within 50 years of its establishment. Please appreciate the president of the once again, Shedra, sorry. Uh, I also have one of our partner. Uh, she has been here with us, listening keenly to the presentation by Dr. Shedra, uh, Mrs. Abeje. She will just come and do a brief recap of the presentation, after which she will now call for maybe one or two contributions from the general audience. From there, we will now move to the next 
item. So please join me as I invite her to take charge of the podium. observed. Thank you very much for this opportunity. For me, this, this is a very, very, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because, you know, there was some, some time ago I started hearing the scrapping of NYC. And I thought to myself, I said, who is, what, what is the reason for this? I mean, the person saying this probably didn't go through the NYC. You see, for me, the network of friends that I have today, I would not have had them but for the NYC. I hear some young people, like we said that before, after the university we said, these people, they just want to waste our time. You know, one whole year, you know when you're young, you're strong, you're energetic, you want to move. You know, you feel like NYC is a trap. They just want to waste our time. Why don't they just put all these monies together, you know, you know? Put all these monies together and give us, they will start a business. You see, I said no money matches the experience. No money can go close to what NYC can provide for you. No amount of money can open the doors that NYC can open for you. When he said it, he talked about Mr. Tito. I got to learn about Mr. Tito when I was in the university. This man came into this town with nothing as a core member, just like a few persons. He came and then he found an opportunity. Today he's one of the biggest franchises, one of the biggest eateries in this town. That's Mr. Tito. And he came to a town where nobody thought nothing would come out of. For instance, when I went to camp, I was surprised at things that they thought about Benue State. I'm from Benue State. I met people from Worry. I really thought that those people were weird people. The only thing I knew about Worry people was Worry you know they carry last, and they will swindle you every opportunity they get. I was so, as soon as I saw anybody who spoke Wafi, I was like, dear Lord, I better protect my pocket. But I found out that they were nothing like I thought. And they found out that I was nothing like the top Benue State persons were. They had some weird, uh, you know, ideas about people from this side. And as I did them, I have very, my closest friends were from Warren at the end of the service year. They were like missing pieces of me. Now, he talked about selfless service to the community. As core members, as youths, the first thing you think about is, I want to make money and I want to make it fast. You need to tear away that thinking. If not, you won't serve properly. Those persons that you see receiving awards, if they put money first, I can assure you they will not be able to get that award. If you're a young core member and you've just been posted, the first thing you do in any community you're posted to, don't look down on the community. Don't look down on the place. Think of what you can do for that place. And that's what we earn you a national award. Think about it and start it immediately. Selfless service. Spirit of oneness and brotherhood. Boy, we were like brothers and sisters. I love these people like I would love my siblings. We could do anything for each other. And that's what NYC can do for you. You know, these were persons that you thought maybe had some weird upbringing and, you know, they were not humans or probably they were this and that. At the end of the day, we found out that they were loving people. You see, I'm proud to NYC, I didn't know this country was divided as you thought. But when you go to the camp and you meet people, especially the second, the third day, when you start asking, where do you come from? Ah, I'm from Bedway. Where do you come from? I'm from Mejo, I'm from Bini. And then somebody will be like, Benue people. Is it not people that they say people do so and so and so? Ah, worry people. Ah, you people. You know, so you see that those things start, start breaking down. Start breaking down walls. And you see that you're, you're together, you're one. Now he talked about the khaki advantage. Very important. During my service year, I had a, we had an opportunity to organize a career day for my school where I served. With my khaki, 
we, uh, we got, uh, got Coca-Cola to partner with us, we got the EW to partner with us, we got the NMPC to partner with us, and we got the NTA to partner with us. How did we do this? We organized for the career day, Indomie came with their trucks, they came and cooked for the participants and everyone. Uh, NTA came and covered the entire program free of charge, you know, with everything they had. We had uh, the Coca-Cola came and served them drinks, and then NMPC gave a lot of gifts. I mean, they did the NMPC thing. Now, we would not have been able to enter any of those offices if we were not wearing khaki. If you get to the NMPC gate or you get to any of it, where I served in Abuja, so I'm talking about the headquarters of these offices here. We had the opportunity to enter anywhere. I can't count how many times I was able to enter into NMPC, how many times I got to the National Assembly, and we never came out empty. The connections I was able to view, the opportunities that came my way, is called the Kaki Advantage. I entered buses and the conductor would tell me, ah, copper, no pay. Free of charge. <laughs> That's true. You know, things are hard now. <laughs> Hello? You see, things are, a little, things are a little different now. But in those days, you had the Nauru five buses in Abuja. And as a call member, if you enter with your uniform, you don't pay. like that that I got, even from a conductor that you think had nothing. Yes. You say, I won't take your 15 naira. You are saving us. That's true. And that's a khaki advantage. You gain respect from people. Just like that, that you know, uh, conductor. He told me, say, I want to be like you one day. Don't pay me. You see, now you have opportunities for awards and the rest. Now, making most, the most of your service here, you talked about being clear. You see, don't take this time as a time to play, you know, to have fun and the rest. Of course, you have fun as a young person, but tell yourself, what do you want to be? This is the time to tell yourself what you want to be and you start working towards it immediately. Don't say 33,000 or how much are you paid now? It's so small. I was paid 9.5. I was paid 9.5. I don't think that is those in, in those days. The, the money was barely, almost not enough. But I saved. I saved from it. And I can tell you it was not easy. If anybody tells you it's easy now what? Now set up. Now scam. It's not easy. So you have to make the most of every opportunity. Embrace the opportunities you have. And then learn a skill. Like you talked about. Learn a skill. There are so many graduates roaming about the street today. So many, you know, I, I have a PhD by God's grace. I have friends who have PhDs. They don't have jobs. So school is not everything. But there are people who don't have these degrees, but they are making it so big in life. I have a friend who graduated the university together. I went to the market and met him. He had a shop. I got a job immediately after my NYC. So when I met him, I said, ah, I'm the it's an evil chap. I'm the busy, I'm fine now. Would you look for a job? He said, me, look for work. Are you serious? I will never, never look for work. He said, today, today, if by those days our kids go to the same school, if he packs his car, eh? Thank God I'm not doing so badly, but I know where I pack my car. You see, this is a guy that I can say, if I sit somewhere because of my plenty of degrees, he can't sit there. But he doesn't care. He's making a lot of money, and he has a certificate. So don't take it for granted. Learn a skill. And don't put the challenges on your head. You see, I was in NYC in Abuja. When I was posted to a school, I almost cried. I saw, you should, I saw it in a dream. I, I dreaded where I would be posted to so much. I dreamt that I saw a school. I binded it. I binded it. So when the posting came out, it was a school. So I called my auntie, I was crying. I said, Auntie, I'm not going, you know. Auntie, I'm not going. She said, she said, just go first. I went to the school. It was at area three, the heart of Abuja. I was given accommodation, a flat, in area three. I called her again. I said, Auntie, I don't want. I want to serve in the NPC. 
I want to say all these big, big places, United Nations and all, I don't want the school. She, you, she, you see, the way she insulted me, I coupled myself immediately. And I went quietly and accepted the school. I can tell you, the Bible says, don't consider all days as the best. But I enjoyed my NYC. I had class to me, the schools, that they so appreciated and loved and valued me, and I gave value to them. I served them with five core members of that school. We were celebrated and we gave, they gave us awards. In short, they almost put a picture as a permanent monument in the school. Because we served, you know, selflessly. We all came probably. We all wanted NMPC and all the big names. But at the end of the day, till today, there are so many people that I can reach because I served in that school. There are so many opportunities that were open to me because I served selflessly. Don't look at the challenges, don't consider your allowance. Serve with joy. Serve with joy. Take every opportunity. Take all the challenges thrown at you as opportunities. Just like he said. And you have a beautiful service here. Nigeria is us like we sing, and Nigeria will serve. Thank you very much, and enjoy your service here. Thank you very much. Please, let's appreciate uh, Mrs. Abeje of NDEs. Appreciate her once again. And let's celebrate NYC at 50 once again, please. The representative of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Peru State, Samuel Oton, ably represented by the Director of Youth, the Commandant, Nigerian Army School of Military Engineering, all other very special guests at the high table, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the high point of this celebration, which is the cutting of the NYC at 50 anniversary cake. And to handle that aspect of the program is Mrs. Ruth Baba of Champa. And uh, we'll be expecting six representative core members that have been selected already. And all the officials at the high table will step up to the stage to do that aspect of the program. Core members that we are choosing, please step forward immediately. Don't waste our time, please. Let me recognize the President of Legion of Canal, Philip Guaskebe, representing the Commandant 401 Special Forces Brigade. Please appreciate him. The Deputy Controller of Immigration, DCIOS, Ibe Buchi. You are most welcome, sir. Please appreciate him. And uh, ACC, Opa Innocent AJ, representing the Commandant of the General Security and Civil Defense Corps. Please appreciate him. Representing the Command Secondary School here in Makodi, representing the Commander. Please appreciate it, please. Uh, while we await the cutting of the cake, we will move straight away ahead to invite some of our stakeholders that are here to say a very brief goodwill message about NYC. So to do that, representing the collaborating agencies, I want to invite uh, Major General A.G. Audu, Commandant Nasme, 
for his brief goodwill message. Commander Sir. special guests on the high table, our co-members, gentlemen, as introduced by the MC, and Major General AGL, Commandant, Nigeria High School of Military Engineering. Uh, as also observed by the MC, the Nigerian Army is one of the stakeholders of the of a National Youth Service Corps. As far back in the early 90s, I have been opportune to become commandant of so many NYC camps. In essence, that means so many core members have passed through me. So which means I've also contributed my own. Um, on a very serious note, as observed by our guest lecturer, if you remove the National Youth Service Corps, our dear nation, so many institutions will collapse. Most of our schools, both in the cities, in the rural areas, are presently manned by our youth commerce. and so many other uh, institutions, as also observed by the MC. Our elections, 90% of people that conduct our elections are our youth couples. The recently talked about census that is coming up, so many of our youth coppers will be used. For me, I think the issue of scrapping the NYC should be no go. I don't want to talk too much. I'm not a politician. <laughs> but I think so many of us uh, it's also a uh, privilege to know that the formation of the NYC was partly the military's decision. So I think we should guide it jealously until our moderator has also brought it up. So many friends. Personally, I see how so many of the coppers that have left, that finished their services, where I was privileged to be their camp commandant, they are doing very well, and I'm still in contact with them. At this point, this is not a speech making occasion. Let me hand over the microphone to somebody to also make this comment. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the Commander Nasme, and your General H.G. Aubu, representing the NYC collaborating agencies. Also, to deliver a brief goodwill message on behalf of 
all the core employers in Benue State, Professor A.H. Abu, Director of Brainy Kids Academy. Prof. Please appreciate Prof. Please. stand on the existing protocol, and I take a cue from the Major General. I'm not a politician, and I don't, <laughs> I also don't pretend to be a politician. You see, for people like me, if it were not for the NYC, I wouldn't have learned the core sign that I did in secondary school. Way back in 1975, when I was in Form 3, it was a youth club member that taught me physics. <laughs> His name is still very alive as I speak to you. One Mr. Umiak. And he taught us quite a number of things that have still become my lifetime experiences. As a copper myself, way back in 1983, I had a close contact and relationship with my house of friends and colleagues in Bochi. And this one is also advisory to the core members. The camp commander there, in his speech, he one of those occasions he said, there is a place in Bochi, Bochi, the larger Bochi there. It's called Bayangere. And he now qualified it. If you want to enjoy it, you'll go to Bayangere. But Bayangere is where, as young men in those days, we thought that things were happening, but it was the workplace to go. Say, how can we? So, like my student, Dr. Acton, he did acknowledge, if I had not become a lecturer in the Joseph South Taka University, would I have a problem like that happen? So for you as a core member, you are going to impact on the lives of so many other persons. We have a school, and the school that we have, Brady Keys Academy, it was born out of a need. It did say chance and time. 2014, we had an issue here in Makodi. Refugees from the villages. And where I stay, because I'm a neighborhood person, they were all over the place. And they needed to be educated. But the challenge that we had is that it was only the chief language that almost nearly all of them could speak. My wife and I said, these are children. This need to be provided a teacher. And I think that's where you come in, but also have to come into as Nigerians. And we started on the school. The moderator did advice. Profiling is an offense. The fact is, it is ungodly. Some of my teachers were profiling those children. And I went there and interacted with them. I said, there's nothing like a teen child. There's nothing like an evil child. There's nothing like a family child. A child is a child. <laughs> Let me round up by saying, you can walk, you can think, you can do so many other things humanly possible. But for all, the spark was tapping into God's grace. And I share this with you. My wife was struggling with her to teach those children only teeth that they could speak. And the language of communication is what? It's English. Teachers were grumbling. And he came on one day after our morning devotion. He said he was going to start with memory verse. One memory verse in the week. From one in the week to nine. You need to visit our school and see the wonders of God. What am I saying? Hand over. Hand over to God. If you begin to think more about your past, you will be shedding tears. If you concentrate too much about your future, it's going to be lost and lost of fears. But if you concentrate on the present, 
which you have control of. In fact, I will say the whole day. Whole day is too long a time. The moment. Take the moment by the moment, and it's all going to be cheers. I want to appreciate the NYC for an opportunity like this. I will continue to partner with the NYC, especially those of us who have been beneficiaries, and we're also beneficiaries of the scheme. Thank you so much. I have a great day. Thank you very much, Prof. Please, let's appreciate the Prof, please. And the, the last good message from one of our stakeholders, this time around our religious leader, uh, Father Daniel Thomas, representing Reverend Father Jude Otese, please. So after his good message, we will not do the cutting of the cake with the core members and the members of the high table, after which the special guest of honor will deliver his good message and will close the program. All protocols duly observed. My name is Father Daniel, as uh, it has been said. I'm here to represent Father Jude Odese, CSSP. He's a chaplain of the state. But currently, he is in the UK. He's also the superior of the Holy Ghost Fathers, province of Nigeria, Northeast. So he has called me to be here to represent him. I want to appreciate the paper presenter and the person that reviewed it and every other person who has spoken here. A few messages I want to give from, the, from your chaplain who is absent is uh, to encourage you to seize the moment of your NYSC service to rebuild yourself. A couple of times I've been able to celebrate masses for some of them at the camp at, at Wanone, and I speak to them about this. As we continue to grow up in life, we encounter a lot of things that destroy us, that we lose our strength of character our strength of character, which if we do not have, we may not be able to maximize the gifts that God has given us. And uh, part of the way that we are able to rebuild or renew ourselves is when we get out of our familiar environment. The time of your NYASC provides you that moment to get out of your familiar environment. She spoke about integration where you have the chance to integrate, to remove your prejudices, those things that they, to they told you about people here and there. So you have this opportunity to see firsthand, to confirm, to see that things are not really the way you heard, the way you, 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 you knew from your culture. It's also a moment that you can do some programs for yourself, build better character, build discipline, uh, somebody talked about the scars of sin, and he said, when you pick up bad habits, and even you come to repent later in your life, your body has become used to those bad habits. As, at that point in time, maybe you, you learned how to, to sleep too much, and now maybe at age 35, you want to, to do something with your life. Your body is used to sleeping. Your body will be fighting your will. Your body will continue to fight that will. Now you want to do something, but your body is used to sleeping. The platform of this program helps you to recreate, to renew yourselves. My younger brother, our last one, is in Delta now, doing the same program. He was smoking. But one of the things I told him is, Seize this opportunity to rebuild yourself. Now you're going to cut away from your uh, familiar friends who continue to push you into those things. As you go into this new place, seize the opportunity to rebuild yourself. It's very important because if you continue the way you are, 
you may have very good intentions, but your body will continue to fight you. So we thank the NYC program for the, 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 the huge uh, impact it has made in our nation. As we celebrate five decades of our existence, we pray that God will continue to bless our country by this program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father Daniel Thomas. Please, let's celebrate him once again. Daniel Ugande. Thank you, sir. So at this point, I will now be inviting the core members. Please step forward. And then I'll just say that. Permit me to invite His Excellency and other dignities at the table, please, to join the core members for the cutting of the cake. As the saying goes, NYS is Nigeria, and Nigeria is NYS. So it's on that note that we cut a, a symbolic cake to mark our 50 years of existence. That's a long, long time. So I would um, beckon on the executive governor representative and every other person, stretch your hands forward. Even from the other hand, you just want to tie up with us. As we recite NYSC at 50, can you give me an N? N. I didn't hear you, give me an N. N. A Y. y. A resounding S. N. A very big C. C. What does that spell? Thank you very much, congratulations. Please wait for the other uh, photographer. Please, photographer. Are we done? Thank you very much. Come members, remain there, please. Our next stakeholders, please. Behind that table, please. NSCDC, Immigration, NDLEA, co employers that are here with us, please step forward. Commandant, Command Secondary School, representative of the 41 Special Forces Brigade. Manuel, I said four employers now. Where are the four employers? Okay. Don't worry. Are we done? Thank you very much. Staff of NYC Secretariat, Assistant Directors, Assistant Directors, please be fast, make it snappy. Assistant Directors, Chairman, Please. Members of the standing committee with the chairman, chairman and members of the standing committee. 
first, please. Press, Madam Comfort. Tony Oga. Thank you very much. The group members, you can now take your seat. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Bedway State, other distinguished guests at the high table, our partners, staff, gentlemen, group members at this point, permit me to invite the representative of the executive governor of the United States to deliver his goodwill message. Before I deliver His Excellency's uh, speech, let me first and foremost appreciate uh, the State University Director and his team for the wonderful job they have been doing in Bellevue State. <laughs> let me also especially appreciate uh, our guest lecturer, Doc Iwaweda, the moderator of the lecture, Madam, we also appreciate you. Let me appreciate the Commandant of NASME, other military officers and paramilitary officers that are here with us. I want to honorably appreciate our Reverend Father present for your remarks and uh, insights. As already said, my name is Mr. Michael Omanga, Director of Youth Development and State Ministry of Youth and Sport, Benue State. Let me not take too much of your time by going straight to the Governor's speech. I am most delighted to deliver a good message on this auspicious occasion, marking the 50th anniversary lecture organized by NYC Secretariat in Benue State. Let me also commend the founding fathers of NYC scheme, General Yakubu Gawan, former Nigerian head of state, for his vision and foresight of establishing an agency that today has become a unifying force. The scheme, since inception, has continued to increase from strength to strength in the annals of Nigerian political history date. NYC, within its five decades of existence, has taught the lives of every family, home, local government and state. Therefore, organizing such a, such a line of activities to celebrate this age long scheme with visible remarks achievement is apt. On behalf of the government and the people of Benue State, I want to join millions of young Nigerians to congratulate the Director General of NYSC, Brigadier General Y.T. Ahmed, Management Team and Heads of NYC Formations across Nigeria on its 50th anniversary and Golden Jubilee celebrations. Your uprightness and determination to sustain the scheme to legacy is quite commendable. I cannot, by conclude this address, without appreciating the state coordinator, 
his staff and club members for sustaining the team spirit and commitment that have continued to yield more accomplishment in the state. Finally, the Tennessee government under my watch would continue to provide an enabling environment and support for NYC to succeed in the state. I wish you a successful Golden Jubilee anniversary. Thank you, and God bless the Federal Department of Education. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, sir. Please, let's celebrate this Excellency. Let's celebrate the United States government. We can do more than that, please. Uh, distinguished guests, we have finally uh, come to the last segment of the program, but I want to inform our guests that the program is in two form. As soon as we draw the curtain for this aspect of the program, the co-members and other NYC officials will be strict for the visitation to open edge homes here in Makodi. So please, Your Excellency Sir, other members of the Adam, may we all rise please as we take the NYC and national anthem. Hello. Hi. NYC anthem after the count of two. One, two, go. You Thank you very much. We want to appreciate all our guests and other stakeholders. All co-members should remain seated, please. All the co-members. The steering committee members, we, alongside with other staff, please, we should start uh, arranging our movement for the visitation to the opening. I want to appreciate His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Fairway State, being represented by the Director of Youth, Mr. Michael Omanga, the Commandant Nasme, the Representative of the Police, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Red Cross Society, Man War Society, Nigerian Immigration Services, Reverend Father, the Reverend of the Chief Judge of Fairway State, our co employers, staff, and other friends of the scheme, the press, for being part of this success story. We celebrate you all for being part of historic events. Uh, as you return back to your respective offices, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Hello, Joshua.
Please. Fruit. Remedy, Ben Wuti, Zona Dentoni today. 